TV 23 KDGL. Covering the High Plains with news, weather, and information. From TV 23 Studios in Sublet, this is High Plains Today. Hi, everybody. You know what? It's Thursday. It's the 5th of November of 2015. Welcome to High Plains Today on TV 23. On today's show, we'll be joined by our entertainment correspondent, Mr. Adam Jewell. Now let's take a look at some happenings in the area. We're going to start off with a sad story. A western Kansas community is in mourning after learning a high school football player in Wallace County has died after he collapsed during a game Tuesday night in Sharon Springs. Wallace County was playing Otis Bison during an eight-man Division I game. Luke Shem had scored a touchdown and an extra point before collapsing shortly afterward. Now Luke was transported to a Denver area hospital, Swedish Medical Center in Englewood, a suburb of Denver. Hospital spokeswoman Nicole Williams told the Associated Press that Luke Shem was kept on life support so family and friends could pay their respects. She later confirmed that life support had been withdrawn and Wednesday afternoon the teen was declared dead. Sad story. On Wednesday at approximately 6.43 a.m., officers received an anonymous tip revealing the location of a Hispanic male wanted on outstanding felony warrants of aggravated battery, aggravated assault, and possession of a controlled substance. The anonymous tip led officers to a residence in the 1200 block of Krauss Court, where the subject refused to come out. After approximately an hour and a half of negotiation and a tactical entry, the subject was taken into custody with no injuries reported. A 30-year-old Garden City man was arrested Tuesday morning on allegations of domestic aggravated assault, domestic battery, and fleeing and eluding law enforcement after he allegedly pushed a woman out of a moving car. Jason Lund was arrested after Finney County Sheriff's deputies responded at about 8 a.m. to a reported domestic aggravated assault that allegedly had occurred earlier in the morning in the area of Mansfield Road, east of Garden City. A 34-year-old woman reported to deputies that sometime between 1 and 3 a.m. Tuesday, she and Lund were driving in her vehicle on Mansfield Road and that he pushed her out of the passenger side of the vehicle while it was moving. Now, as deputies were talking to the woman at her residence, Lund drove by. A short pursuit ensued on the west side of Garden City where Lund wrecked the Ford pickup he was driving. He then fled on the scene on foot but was apprehended a short distance from the scene. A Garden City USD 457 bus driver escaped injury early Wednesday morning when he drove an empty school bus off a rural Finney County road as he traveled to pick up children for the school day. Kansas Highway Patrol Trooper Michael Racy said the bus, driven by Rigoberto Martinez San Juan, 25, of Garden City left Sagebrush Road for unknown reasons and ended up in the riverbed of the Arkansas River. Now, the accident occurred at 6.50 a.m. and no students were on the bus when the accident occurred. The Kansas Board of Regents is soliciting comments from state universities about a proposal to allow people to have concealed guns on their campuses but not carry the weapons openly. The Lawrence Jor Journal World reports that a Regents Committee has da drafted a proposed policy, and the full board hopes to vote on it in December. The 2013 state law says adults 21 and older who can carry concealed guns can bring them into public buildings unless those buildings have security measures such as metal detectors. The law allowed universities to exempt themselves until July of 2017. Now, under the proposed policy, each university must have a place for people to securely store their weapons. Each campus also must identify the buildings in which concealed weapons won't be allowed. And finally, yesterday we had the privilege of presenting Darla Harper of Liberal with $200 as our most recent winner in our KDGL TV cash giveaway. And coming in December, we'll be looking at another cash giveaway. So remember, tune in to KDGL TV 23, High Plains Today, and you'll learn how to register and how to be a winner. That's a look at some of the happenings. Stick around. I'll be back with your forecast and weather after this. 
You're watching High Plains Today on TV23 with host Chris Jewell. TV 23's internet service and 4G live streaming provided by United Wireless. Coverage you deserve. Service you expect. United Wireless. Hi, I'm Chris Jewell, host of High Plains Today, a 30-minute news and information program that airs at noon weekdays right here on TV 23. Hey, do you think you have an idea for something that would make a great segment? Somebody that would make a great interview? What about a community event that needs highlighting? Let us know here at the station. Email us, news at kdgltv.com. You want to feel connected at one with your world. Informed, included, and inspired. So no matter where you are, when important things happen, we're here at all hours, in the moment, on every screen in your life. Your local TV and radio broadcasters. We investigate and inform, give back to the community, build the local economy, even save lives. America's number one source for news, weather, and information. And unlike any other news source, we're here, 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 here and here. We are broadcasters. Always here for you. Wherever here may be. Text TV to 52886. Tell Washington local stations matter. Local weather forecast for the High Plains. And as we look off to the northeast on the TV23 tower cam, you can see there's a few high scattered clouds off to the north. But other than that, it's not bad out there as far as cloudiness. Let's take a look at our readings here at the station. 57 degrees current temperature, relative humidity 53%. Winds are out of the west at 10. Barometric pressure on the rise. As we look at our temperatures, you can see now there is a cold front. That's sneaking down here today that's going to go just like this. And it's already, you can see out at Lamar, their, high, their temperature right now, 54, 57 in Garden City. Everybody else in the 60s, well, Hayes is in the 50s. But look at Medicine Lodge, all the way at 72 degrees. As we look at our current dew points, everybody pretty much in the 30s and the 40s. Now, you can see where this front is kind of coming across here because... Winds are out of the north, northeast at Lamar as they're on the other side of that front. Everybody else pretty much out of the west, southwesterly directions. Winds are going to be not as bad as yesterday, but there's still going to be a little wind. Looking at the highs and lows as recorded at the Garden City Regional Airport yesterday, we had a high of 74. 81 back in 2008, 49 the overnight low. Two was the record back in 1991. Now, if you remember... The last two days have been minus two and minus three. So look at it, it was warming up back in 1991. And we do have 21 hundredths inches of moisture in the bucket overnight. Looking at our forecast for today, we're only looking at a high of 63 today. There is a 30% chance of scattered thunderstorms around the western part of the area. That's all going to happen later on this afternoon. Winds are going to switch around at the, out of the northwest today. Then tonight, mostly clear. We're going to have some areas of frost. It's going to be a low of 33, probably in mainly low-lying areas. Winds are going to be out of the north-northwest. They're going to switch around after midnight out of the west-southwest. And then the high tomorrow, we're looking at 60 degrees. Winds are going to be still out of the west-southwest at about 11. And then later on in the day, switching around to the east-southeast. Tomorrow night, 32 degrees for the low. Partly cloudy. Winds are going to be out of the east-southeast. At 11, north, northeast winds. Taking a look at our seven day, you can see we've got that 30% chance of rain in there. And as we get into next week, still going to warm up a little bit, but hey, it is November. Lows in the 30s and lower 40s. That's a look at the weather.
Markets coming up. Are you tired of worrying about going over your cell phone data cap? Tired of surprise bills and text messages asking for more money? Stop the insanity. Switch to unlimited nationwide data from United Wireless. Switching is easy. Come in today and see for yourself. For a limited time, get free activation, up to $200 per line bill credit, and save on the latest smartphones. See how much you can save with unlimited nationwide data from United Wireless. See store for details. Same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. So, I got this new family, and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? 
Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. And welcome back. We are now joined by our entertainment correspondent, Mr. Adam Jewell, in Chicago, via Skype. He is just out there today. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure where he is. You're out, right? Well, That's obviously, right. you're outside. I'm out here. Hashtag, I'm out here. Hashtag, I'm out here. Okay. Yes. And so, where would that be? That would be, if you can see the marquee behind me, in, the, in front of the Biograph Theater. Now, for those of you who don't know, fun fact, the Biograph Theater is where the infamous John Dillinger was shot and killed. And technically behind it, but it's kind of a John that didn't want to do it in front of an alley. So I figure, why not in front of the theater? Okay, so this is where the lady in red led him out after the movie and uh, Purvis and the uh, FBI, et cetera, uh, took him down in the alley behind the biopic. Biograph, yes. Biograph, okay. There's been yeah. many biopics about his life being killed after being in the biograph. True. Okay. <laughs> and he just wanted to go to the movies. He was just, he was a lover of the cinema. The silver screen back in, that, in those days. Yes. All right. Well, let's get to it. You're going to talk to us about three movies today. One of them mm -hmm. is, I'm kind of wanting to hear what you have to say about this. The first one is the Peanuts movie. That's right. Charles Schultz, he's back to bring back the lovable Peanuts Yang from Charlie Brown to his lovable dog, Snoopy, and his trusty sidekick, Woodstock. Uh, it opens tomorrow on, what is that, the 6th of November. Now, you've basically, they've been kind of mum about the story, but it's basically Charlie Brown likes a girl and is hoping to court said girl. But I don't know, but I'm going to go see it. So he, he, he's, because back in the day, didn't Peppermint Patty was always trying to woo him, wasn't she? Yeah, I believe so. I don't and know. And she always, she always called him Chalk. Yes. All right. So, and then, of course, you're going to have Linus and Lucy and Charlie Brown's sister Sally and yep. uh, Schroeder and Pigpen and all the characters from, uh, the, from Peanuts. the Peanuts. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, all right, here's the question, though. Will there be uh -huh. any adult dialogue? Because, you know, in the old, in the old TV shows, it was the trombone. parents, yeah, we're always, wah, 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 wah. Will there be any of that in this movie, do you think? I bet. <laughs> why, why mess with a, with a good formula? But if it's not broke, don't fix it. Okay, so this was done by the same guys that, what, did the Ice Age movies and stuff? Is that what I read? Same studio. So oh, it's, same it's studio. DreamWorks okay. people. So they did Shrek, Ice Age, uh, Rio, so, and Despicable Me. Okay, so this, this could be a pretty fair movie then, right? Yeah. You're, ho you're hoping? Yeah. DreamWorks right. usually brings its A game to its animated stuff. Can maybe give Pixar a run for his money? I don't know, but we'll see. So you're going you're gonna to go see this tomorrow when it comes out there in Chicago, but probably not there at the Biograph. No, the Biograph only does stage plays now. Fun oh, fact. okay. All right. Another fun fact. All right. All right. So you're pretty high on the Peanuts movie for now, but that may change after you see it. Correct. Okay. All right. Next one up is James Bond. Bond. James Bond is back. Daniel Craig is 007 in the new movie Spectre. Yep. He's back. And if you've seen the previous three with Daniel Craig, they've treated the three kind of as a reboot itself. So instead of one movie that reboots an entire franchise, they did three to kind of kick off James Bond. Because in the first one with Casino Royale, it was how he became James Bond. And the second was how he kind of became the killer. And then the third, it revealed some of his past and then it brought in the rest of the normal crew. So now you have the new M, the new Monty Penny, and those people. Okay, so they, but they, see, before they didn't do this. I mean, we went from, well, whoever the guy was in the very first one, I can't remember. Then George they went to, Lazenby. Thank you. And then they went to Sean Connery and Roger Moore and Timothy Dalton and Pierce Brosnan. Now we're on to Daniel Craig. But with the previous yeah. James Bonds, they never did that. They just, 
It just kind of rolled from one to the other with, with all the same characters, whether they were new or not. Exactly. And this is what, that's what makes it in, this one interesting, is that he, they basically, in uh, Skyfall, that's when they just kind of, they blew up the old DB5 that you remember from Goldfinger, kind of saying, okay, the old James Bond is out, the new James Bond is in. <laughs> so how do you think Daniel Craig is, I mean, the, with, with today's, in today's day and age, when they do so much digital and they can reproduce several things, it seems like there's much, there's, there's a lot more giant action scenes in these newer James Bond movies with Daniel Craig. Kind yeah, of a departure from, from the old James Bond. There's bigger action, but it's still grounded in realism. Like, you're not going to see, like, what was it? in Whichever movie it was with Timothy Dalton that had the floating, the submarine car or things like that. It's still grounded in realism, but it's just a, become a bigger spectacle. And what's interesting is they brought back Sam Mendes to do this, who did Skyfall. And in normal James Bond tradition, each movie always has a different director. I don't believe a single director has directed G James Bond twice. I'm sorry, but, but Sean Connery is still, to me, the, the coolest of the James Bonds. Well, this is Daniel Craig's last one, most people believe. So. Oh, really? Mm hmm So he'll be moving on, so they'll be looking for another 007. Yep. Huh. So I wonder if when they do that, if they'll retool everything again. I doubt it. Doubtful. I bet they roll into the same old thing. All right. Oh, is Q in this movie with all his fancy stuff? Yeah, he was in the last one. Oh, okay. All right. He's younger, I, though. Oh, I got to get out more. All right. Okay, so Spectre, 007, James Bond. Daniel Craig is James Bond. You're going to go mm -hmm. see that one also, I'm assuming. Yes, I right. assumed right. Finally, our last one is Beast of No Nation. Yes. The movie is called... Uh, Beast of No Nation. And, and it's on ne Netflix. Yes and no. <laughs> All right. They had to explain they did, that to okay, me. What they did with this movie was with Beast of No Nation. They released it on Netflix. It's Netflix's first uh, feature film that they have done. In the way that they've been doing television, this is their first feature. But the thing is, with Beast of No Nation, they also did limited release in the theater. So... And it's directed by Kerry Fukunaga, who did the first season of True Detective. And it stars Idris Elba, who, by the way, might be the next James Bond. Nice segue. And he <laughs> plays a warlord. Well, not really the warlord, but a captain of a freedom fighting crew in some a fictional country in Africa that is trying to overthrow the government and takes child soldiers. And it's about a small child who gets taken and brought into this whole child soldier regime. Okay, so um, has this been released yet, or is it out on Netflix Yeah, it was now? released last week. Okay, have you seen it? Not yet. It's in my list. It's in your bucket list of Netflix to do. Yes. All right. I hear people driving by and honking. They must be honking at you, knowing that you're on TV 23 with us and that you're our entertainment correspondent. That's right. I'm okay. out here. All right. All right. You're out here. Hashtag I'm out here. All right. Yep. So thanks for joining us today, Adam. Looks like a really nice day in Chicago out there in front of the biograph where it John is. Dillinger was gunned down by the FBI back in the day. All right. It'll be interesting. I, I, I would like to see you take us out and about a little more in Chicago. And okay. none of these, and I know you're going to poo-poo this, but none of these would be complete if you didn't do one down in front of the big chrome bean by the uh, Chicago Art Institute. Well, just so you know, that has no movie significance to the city of Chicago, so probably not. But the Art Institute does. You can stand well, in front I of the Lions, kind of, the Art Institute, because that was in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I would have to be in the Art Institute, but we'll talk. All I'll, right. talk I'll talk with them. Have, have a good week. We'll talk to you next week. See ya. Okay. And we'll be back with more after this. Hi, Chris Jewell, host of High Plains Today, a 30-minute news and information program that airs weekdays at noon right here on TV23. We talk about news, we talk about sports, we talk about weather, we're even going to talk entertainment. 
and we'll have live guests right here on set with me. So, every day at noon, tune in High Plains Today. We'll see you then. Weekdays here on TV 23. You want to feel connected at one with your world. Informed, included, and inspired. So no matter where you are, when important things happen, we're here at all hours, in the moment, on every screen in your life. Your local TV and radio broadcasters, we investigate and inform, give back to the community, build the local economy, even save lives. America's number one source for news, weather, and information. And unlike any other news source, we're here, 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 and here. We are broadcasters, always here for you, wherever here may be. Text TV to 52886. Tell Washington local stations matter. Know what? Since I got adopted, I've learned a lot about these humans. Uh, I know. I mean, check out these two. It's Flirt City over here. Yeah, I noticed that. It looks like my human is definitely into your human. Oh, look! I think she's getting his number. Nice. Your human's got some sweet moves. Takes after his dog. <laughs> oh, look, they're doing that thing where they put their arms around each other. She kicked up a leg. It's like in the movies. That's awesome. Looks like we're going to be hanging out a little bit more. Hey, and we're back. Perry Ellis led a balanced uh, University of Kansas attack. He had 22 points last night as the fourth-ranked Jayhawks posted an 89-66 exhibition win over Pitt State last night at Allen Fieldhouse. Hey, welcome to the jungle. Johnny Manziel will start tonight in place of Josh McCown. He's injured on Thursday night football as the Browns take on the Bengals. And you know what? Baylor and Kansas State are prime example of how quickly things change in college football. Three years ago, top-ranked Wildcats were unbeaten and barreling towards the national title game. And the Bears were in the midst of an underwhelming season. Well, that's kind of flip-flopped around. They'll be taking them on tonight. Baylor in Manhattan. Let's take a look at our weather. Hey, it's 58 degrees out right now. And there's Felix the Fly. Relative humidity, 49%. Winds are out of the west at 11. Looking at our seven-day, yep, there is a chance of rain tonight, but that's going to be later this afternoon after 5 o'clock. Highs in the 60s. Well, we got Saturday. It's only going to be 55, but, hey, it is November. Go out and make it a great Thursday, everybody. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Hey, Dr. Jack. The latest information from TV23 on our Facebook page, KDGL-TV. Same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig.